welcome to the Backyard Professor Chess videos. It is a beautiful fall morning here on the South Fork of the Snake River. It's world famous fishing waters here. I'm going to make them world famous chess waters. <laughs> Not really, it sounds grandiose, doesn't it? I have a game here that I'm really excited to show you. Um, again, the theme is rooks. The importance and value of the files. My opponent is white and I play the black pieces. He opens with the king pawn and I match him. I say, all right, king pawn it is. He gives me a king gambit. I don't accept the gambit. He supports his center really good with good pawns. I bring out my bishop to get an angle, do some development, and he immediately takes my central pawn with his pawn. I think this is an interesting move. Uh, what it does is it gives me a central knight, although I can't stay there because this is not an advanced outpost. However, I'm not a pawn down. My opponent brings his bishop up, threatening my knight, and I say, okay, I can support my knight now with a central pawn. Don't, don't do the side pawns. There's no reason to do the side pawns. If you're going to support your pieces, go with the central pawns because the power radiates out of the center. That's the best part of the board. I've said that a trillion times. Well, my opponent makes a very good move. He forks my knight and my bishop with his pawn. So you want to be careful when you have an opponent that has two central pawns like this. Be careful how you place your powers or you can get forked. And I got forked here. It's always a good tactic to fork pieces like this. I got out of the fork by coming to here and threatening his bishop and he didn't want to lose his bishop so he moved his bishop down and now I'm able to bring my bishop out of danger put his king in check. So he did get a fork on me but it didn't work he didn't gain a piece. He of course brings his pawn up threatening my bishop developing a beautiful central pawn chain. I drop my bishop back to a5. He brings his knight out. He's developing really well, rather speedily. I needed to bring my pawn up one more time. I wanted to make sure I could match him space for space. At this point, he has more central space, and I don't want him to get a jump on me on the queen side with space, so I pushed my pawn. This is my thinking at the time. He brings up his bishop, a classic centralization of the bishop. I pull out my knight a classical attempt at controlling the center with my knights. We're both developing rather steadily. We're not doing a, a quick one-piece attack and uh, all that kind of silly noise. He brings out his knight. Notice that the development is really quite good. Now, I bring my knight over here to the rim just temporarily to threaten his bishop because his bishop has a lot of influence across this diagonal here. And I didn't want him to have that, so he dropped his bishop back. Now, I don't want to leave my knight on the rim. On the other hand, I've got an option here. Because of the central aspect of the pawns, it's somewhat closed. The board is somewhat closed. So, I would like to swap off one of his bishops. This is his good bishop. Yes, he has one pawn that's on the white squares, but the most of his pawns are on the dark squares, so his dark squared bishop is going to be limited. I would like to swap his good bishop. This is why I moved this knight here. He doesn't want to swap the bishop. He pulls his bishop out. He says, no, I don't want to do that. In the process, of trying to exchange his bishop, I acquired yet another target. I'm trying to practice target consciousness, like Jeremy Silman so properly teaches in his series of books, the How to Reassess Your Chess. Books I would strongly recommend you get, study, and learn like I'm trying to do. In the process, I acquire a target and put the king in check. Now I've made it so that his king cannot castle. He has to move out of check. He moves toward my knight, of course. 
And rather than backing out now, I see a way to keep pressure on him and further my development. Now when you can see things like this, take advantage of them. So what I did is I brought my bishop all the way over here to h3 to support my knight. And now you can see the enormous pressure I'm starting to build here. He sees it so well, he brings his bishop up here and goes, check. He takes the f7 pawn and goes, check. I take his bishop, and now he has prevented me from castling also. Apparently, he thinks there's a reason to have compensation for giving me that bishop. Perhaps he thinks keeping me out in the open center is a way that he can attack me. He's somewhat developed, so there's a possibility there. It might be worth the bishop sacrifice. He brings his rook here, to grabbing the open file, incidentally, but putting more pressure on my knight. And instead of backing down, I bring yet again another piece into this to support my knight. And I'm really liking this at this point. I think there's, uh, there's some good pressure here that I've got on him. He drops his queen over to here, goes check, also targets this pawn over here on b7 with his queen. I duck my king back down to here. Now, I can't castle now. And he does a central thrust. When you have your development either superior to your opponent or your at least even, the center forward movement and thrust into the center is always a good thing to do. He's applying pressure to me. He's gaining more space to give his pieces more maneuverability. He's down a piece, so he has to compensate by being maneuverable. I bring my knight back out. He moves his king back over. And I drop my knight down to here and go check. I'm going to dance with him with the knights for a few minutes because I'm trying to maneuver him in a certain position and I get his bishop. I finally got one of his bishops. I'm happy about making this exchange with him. I don't mind this because it eliminates one of the defenders of his king. It also opens up a very cool tactic that I have now open to me where I can bring my bishop up here and go check to the king and skewer his rook. So exchanging that piece, putting his king on the proper square so I can nab me a rook is really fun chess to do. You always want to watch for those kind of tactics. I know I miss them all the time, but sometimes I get to where I can see them and it was very fun for me to see how this worked. However, my opponent didn't just move his king and lose his rook. He brought his knight here and blocked the check on an outpost. Granted, it's only the fourth rank, but it's okay. That's a great move. It centralizes the knight, it blocks the check, and it puts him on an outpost. The fun thing about this is it now enables me to acquire and use my open files. And I'm very excited about this. Now I can bring my queen into the game and go check and take this open file. It's true, my opponent has an open file. But as of yet, he hasn't been able to use it. And now with my acquisition of an open file with my queen, I also guard this pawn from that rook coming and getting that pawn. So I'm very happy about being able to do this. I'm chasing his king around. His king is extremely open and vulnerable, like mine is. I can't castle either. However, that doesn't mean I can't use my rooks. That's true at this point. I can't connect my rooks. Not yet. But I can put my rook on an extremely useful open file toward his king. Now I'm really happy about this because my queen is being backed up by the rook, 
when I'm on an open file and he sees this and he is trying like crazy to dodge out and around and behind so that he doesn't get in trouble. When the king is trying to escape, you don't want him to. <laughs> I mean, hey, the idea here is to get that king because he's so vulnerable. In this particular game, the kings, both kings, are quite vulnerable, so it's time to chase the king. There's other games when you don't need to chase the king. This is not one of those. This is one where I want to chase the king, so I want to bring more pressure toward him. I want to close him out, so I'm coming down on the queen side. I also get to chase this knight off of that uh, beautiful outpost of his. And what's he do? He puts his knight on another beautiful outpost. <laughs> Even further into my territory. Now, this is good chess. This is a real interesting situation that I've got here. Because I don't want to leave that knight there. That is a great knight. I'm fortunate in that I have a bishop here that I can come over and exchange that knight. And I have to. When Look, when your opponent gets that kind of a beautiful outpost, you can't let him keep it. It's worth exchanging either a knight for a knight or a bishop for a knight. And this is my good bishop, you say. That's true, but that's what he's good for also is being able to get rid of that kind of a beautiful knight of your opponent. It's always good to exchange in that particular instance. And now I put my other rook to work. Granted, at this point, it's not a complete open file. That's true. But I am putting my rook to work, and I can press this pawn. I see a king and a queen fork with my pawn, and I'm going to back it up with a rook. I have him in a very tough spot. And he knows it. He brings his queen up here and goes check to the king. I bring my rook straight up. I've got a support from a pawn to block the check. The power of the open, well, the semi-open file comes into play here. He brings his knight up. He's, he wants to either swap my knight or take this pawn. I believe that, that pawn he wants. However, my rook is guarding the pawn. And now he gave me a move to where I can take his passed pawn and eliminate a very powerful central passed pawn and come into this game strongly yet again. You notice he still hasn't had a chance to use this rook and this open file. I've got him too busy focused on this end. He does swap my bishop uh, and technically he has to. That's a swap that's okay for him I believe. That doesn't hurt him to swap the bishop and now watch what my opponent does. He has somewhat taken off the pressure here his king is right out here in the center, man, and I'm trying to get to that king. He is somewhat vulnerable here. He's much weaker on this queen side now than he was a few moments ago. Now he chooses to come over here and use that open file and acquire my seventh rank. When your opponent does this, you have to sit up and pay attention. Be very careful. Because this is a direct attack mode. Now, I, I can't see a lot of combinations that he can do simply because it's a limited number of pieces he has developed here. He has another rook he can bring in here real quick. Uh, so he's up to something. When, when your opponent does that, he's up to something. You really have to pay attention. And I'll admit, this spooked me. I thought, man, what's he driving at? His king is centralized. Not good. It's too early. So I'm going to go ahead and attack the king. I'm going to put the king in check. I have to get the initiative here. He dodges down behind his cover. 
this rook is bothering me. However, I see another way to put him in check, eliminate a central pawn of my opponent's, and acquire yet another open file. Now, I have to be very careful because my queen is on the same aisle of my king, although I know he can't come to here and, and, and threaten me because I simply drop down and take his rook. But I have to pay attention to this anyway. This is not the ideal way. At this point, I have him in check, so he's got to move his king, and he comes forward. Now, the beauty, the power, and the pizzazz of having open files shows itself. Because I took the time to put my rooks on open files, I can now use them just exactly like my opponent is beginning to use them, and I have to present to him as much power as he has to me. So, I come down here and go check using my open file, and I acquire his seventh rank. It has to be done. This is, this is fighting by revolution, not evolution. He drops the king straight down. I've got him now. This game is mine because I have his seventh rank with the queen and a rook. Check to the king. He comes over. And I can, of course, go checkmate. Granted, during the majority of the game, the open files were not used. But that's irrelevant. Man, that is fundamentally irrelevant. The point is, I had the open file, and when I needed it, and I needed to use it, I had it there, and I used it. I brought my rook into the game, both directions, and I utilized them. The queen was off here to the side, out of use. This rook was never developed, so he may as well not have even had it. He did have one rook up to here, but a single rook isn't nearly as deadly as when you have a double rook use or you use your rook with your queen in the open files. And that was the point of this game, I felt. So thanks for watching my videos. I hope this game is instructive for you. I hope you learned something from it. And I truly do hope you use your rooks absolutely every chess game from now on. Use your rooks. It's a necessity. It's not an option. So happy checkmating, man, and I'll see you in the next video.